so guys before uh, we went to the break we did see how we can uh, use sql within the mysql database and now we are going to perform our step number 2 right so that's like uh, we'll perform all the uh, crude operations of sql using python in mysql db so we discussed few steps here for the uh, db connectivity and uh, sql execution from your python program step number 1 is to add the library mysql connector in your program so let's see how we can do that so you can go to the uh, preferences here and uh, then you can go to your interpreter so you can say add mysql hyphen connector so this is the library guys which you need to uh, install this is official library from uh, developer.mysql.com right so let's click on install package so let's just wait for a moment so that the installation gets finished sometimes uh, uh, this may give us a challenge so the other way around is you can use the command pip install mysql hyphen connector so let me just uh, try to see if it works for us or not All right, so it says the package mysql hyphen connector installed successfully right you can see the below the message coming up for us so let's close this say okay so just syncing up uh, with the library so what i will do i will uh, create separate functions to perform the operation right so that you you don't get confused so i'll say a function let's say define save device right so i'll create a separate function here save device now a uh, library is added so this has to be done only once right uh, i'll mention here to be done only once now it's it's not like that every time you have to come up and do the connectivity you will be uh, doing it again and again so you need not to do that now let's write the sql statement so this is my sql statement right which i want to insert uh, the data for then uh, uh, okay so i'll just even mention that this is my step number 1 right sql statement then uh, the next part is create connection so in order to create connection i'll first of all say import my sql dot connector right so you need to import this uh, library called mysql.connector which we actually uh, uh, you know just added into our program now i will say connection let's say the reference variable as con is mysql.connector.connect right in the connect function i need to pass a uh, few attributes now i mean few inputs right so i'll, I'll pass these uh, inputs so the first one is the username now for my database the username is root so this you will get when you are installing the database so these details you can punch in when you are going to install the database okay then the uh, password goes like nothing so i haven't kept any password for my database it's all blank then the host is 127.0.0.1 so guys it means that if you are going to connect to a remote database so you need to know these details all right so uh, you can very easily get a connection created through any other uh, uh, database so last one is what is the name of your database so the name of my database was oridb right so this is the name of your database oridb in which you have this table called devices so we got this connection created right and uh, thereafter my step number 3 is obtain cursor from connection so in order to obtain cursor i will simply say cursor is uh, uh, con dot cursor and then i will say cursor dot execute the sql statement and then last command will be cursor dot commit oh, sorry not cursor my bad connection dot 
commit now when you do a connection dot commit right so it ensures sql statements so i'm just going to come up and say it ensures multiple sql statements executed as transaction so let me come up and tell you what exactly this means so con dot commit will ensure that your sql statement is actually executed okay there may be that you're going to execute multiple sql statements sql statement one sql statement two now both the sql statements should be executed together if any one statement fails so it won't work for us right it's gonna work like a banking transaction now once we are done i can just say a print statement and i can say uh, dv operation finished right so i'll just print out this uh, statement db operation finished and anytime guys you can say connection dot close so you can uh, even close the connection if you want so this uh, becomes optional as per uh, your requirements if you want to close the connection and you you if you are doing some other you know task you can close the connection right for us we'll be executing this function called save device now so when i say save device so this entire code will work and the program will finish and hence the connection will be closed automatically for us okay so before i execute the program i would like to uh, uh, get one acknowledgement from all of you in case we are clear till here anyone with any challenge here wonderful guys thank you so let's run this program session 10a it says db operation finished and guys let's come back here in the database devices let's refresh the table devices and you see a row id 3 so once one is deleted it will not be recreated so the next number will be 3 right so let us even insert one more record I'll just try to change this as uh, cisco11.domain.com admin11 and the password is 11cisco, right? So let's run the code here. DB operation finished. Come back to the database, refresh it, and you see the record in the database in your table. Now, what we need to do is we just need to come up and change only and only these uh, sql commands and rest everything is going to work same for us right let, let me show you how it's gonna work for us so the way you got save device i'm going to come up and create an update device so what will be the difference in update operation right so only sql command will change so let us follow the sql command here so i'll do this here So my SQL command goes like this, update devices, set uh, username as uh, Fiona, password as Fiona123, where ID is, uh, let's say, 4. Now, you see there are four, uh, there are three records with ID 234. So I, I'm just going to change this admin11 and 11 Cisco123 with Fiona details over here. Everything else remains same. Now I can say update the device. So you run the program. It says DB operation finished. Come back. Refresh. So what you see is the record uh, Fiona, Fiona123 coming in for us, right? So it's just the change of SQL command which you are firing from the uh, Python program here. Rest, everything is same. Creating the connection and uh, performing other details. So how are you going to do a delete operation? This is even more easier for us. So I'll just say delete the device. In delete device, I can say delete from devices where ID is equal to four. Right, so this is your delete operation. You are mentioning the ID here. So let us say delete the device. So I'm doing it with separate functions so that uh, you don't get confused here and there. Run the code. It says DB operation finished. Let's come here. Refresh. So you see the row ID 4 is now deleted. 
So anyone having any challenge guys, I think all the three operations, they are quite similar, right? You are just changing the SQL statement, the rest, everything works in the same way. But in my last operation, that's like define fetch all. So I want to fetch all the records. So this is something different from the previous one, right? So our select statement goes something like this, select star from uh, devices. So that's like your table name. So the command is now different. You are going to fetch the data. So if you are going to fetch the data, so then uh, in our cursor part here, when you say cursor assign con dot cursor and you say execute the SQL, after executing the SQL part, you don't say con dot commit. All right, so what I will do is I will say rows assign cursor dot fetch all. So you get a list of all your rows, right? So thereafter I can say for row in rows, print me a row. So this is the difference uh, when we are performing a select operation. Guys. So you run the program here. So what you see is your two different rows being retrieved and uh, this is a tuple in itself. So if I'll say print me not the row, if I'll say print me, uh, okay, so this was one part printing of row. So if I'll say print me a row of let's say uh, one comma row of two. All right, so if you, if you just print uh, row one and row two only, so you get only uh, the corresponding details. That is up to you. What you want to uh, obtain and how you want to obtain. So we can even uh, put the SQL commands uh, where ID is uh, greater than one, where let's say uh, user name is equal to let's say admin one so it totally depends upon you right so what do you want to fetch so for example the username is john let's 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 try to retrieve this uh, uh, record where username is john and password is uh, john one two three right so i'll run the code here so here you are, right? For the username John and uh, uh, password John123. So this is the detail, Cisco iOS, Cisco1.domain.com, if you can see guys. So can I get one smiley? So the four operations, how are we going to perform uh, with respect to our database? They should be clear to everyone. They, they're not that complicated. So once you, you know, execute few SQL commands in the database, you become more confident. Now, what we have to do next, the next part of our database interaction would be how we can create object oriented programming design and use these database operations. Okay, so this is the next part, the last part of our discussion uh, for the day. So I'm going to write one new Python file and let's say this is our session 10b. So we create a class called a uh, device. We create one uh, instructor, I mean constructor here. So we'll have a few inputs for the constructor part because in my device, I'm going to take certain details here. So these are the details which we want, device type, host, username and password, right? So I'll uh, take these inputs, device type, host, then the username and then the password. So these are the details here. So we say self dot device type assign device type. So I'm using object oriented programming structure. I hope uh, this part is also clear to everyone.
right and uh, i'll say one function called show device so in show device i'll just say print me device details so dot format self dot device type self dot uh, host self dot password then self dot sorry this was the password the previous one was user so this is uh, one of my structure of object I hope you can recall your oops right so guys as for object oriented programming structure so if I need to create the object of device, how I will create it, right? So I'll say a device, which is uh, a device. And by default, I am passing all the nuns. Right? So by default, all of the details are none. So device type, host name, username and password is none. So if you will say device dot show the device and you run the program here, it says device details are all none. If you can see guys. Right, so it says none. So I want the user to input the data for these uh, uh, different, you know, attributes. How you can do that? So I can say define. Let's say uh, get data for device from user. So how you will uh, deal with it now? So I'll say self dot device type is uh, input enter device type then we have this uh, host then uh, username and lastly the password right so initially i'll create the device with all the data is none then I can say device dot get the data for device from user and then I will show the data. Let's run the program. So enter the device type. Let's say I'll put up this as Cisco underscore iOS host is let's say 127.0.0.1 username is john and the password is john123 now it says device details over here now what is the challenge the moment your program finishes right so the line number 23 over here when it finishes so after line number 23 data entered by user in object is lost right if it has to be saved we got two options so we have two different options uh, uh, to deal with it right if it has to be saved that is uh, persisted you wanna you wanna persist the data so if you wanna do that you got two different ways the first way is uh, known as files and the second way is uh, database so guys everyone knows how to work in files and how to work in the databases right so we know both the things so if you wanna uh, you know add the data in files that I have already shown you in the previous sessions but today we'll see data is within the object the object is created in the memory in the RAM which is temporary and we need to permanently save the data in the database so how you can deal with it so uh, to play with the database we already have created our code for example this uh, save device right so I'll, I'll take the same function from here and uh, uh, create this function called here as save device and I'll uh, pass the self over here because in my class if you create any function the first input should be self right so the SQL statement should something be like this if you can see guys it's like fill in the blanks now right 
So I'm just using this SQL statement over here in this manner. So I'll import my SQL dot connector to perform the DB operation. So the same function insert into devices the values null and these four things. So these four things uh, uh, can be given as an input in this manner. So dot format, right? So I'll uh, put these uh, details here in the format function in this manner. Okay, so just give me a moment. How is it unresolved? So just give me a moment. Then we have self dot host, then self dot username and self dot password. So what I did, I actually created this uh, SQL statement in a dynamic way, right? So you have this data, you have this data which will be substituted here in the SQL command and then everything will be performed, right? And I can say uh, over here, device save dot format self dot device type right so uh, now once you show the device there is a choice which is uh, uh, by default supposed to be entered by the user so uh, would you like to save device so there are two options either yes or no So this is what we are going to ask the user, right? So if the choice is equal to yes, then what I'll do, I'll say device dot save the device. So this is how uh, we are now going to implement persistence for our objects. So guys, anyone with any query here, right? So first of all, I created a device object which, which had no details. Then we got the data from the user, we, sh we have shown the data to the user and I'm lastly asking the user, would you like to save the device, right? So if, if he wants to save the device, he will say yes and will say save device function, which is going to execute my DB operation. So let's run the program here. So I'll uh, now start with the device type. Let's say this is your uh, Cisco underscore iOS host is 127.0.0.1 username is uh, Harry password is Harry123 so would you like to save your device I'll say yes hit enter so Cisco iOS device saved come here refresh you see this record number 5 Cisco iOS device 127.0.1 Harry Harry123 so guys, can I get a smiley as an acknowledgement? I hope this part is clear to everyone. So this is the final uh, outcome of your object oriented programming structure mixed with your uh, database. One more effective way how you should be actually, you know, uh, doing the programs. So uh, this is what we got as in the DB connectivity part. So the other operations, That's like your update, delete and uh, uh, fetch, right? So you integrate yourself. So what I did, I actually added this uh, data here. Uh, from, from this uh, session 10A, we got the details, right? So you have this data here. So you integrate it yourself in this uh, program, right? Now just for an instance, what I can do is I can uh, uh, put this fetch all function. 
right and uh, I can just come here and say fetch all let's say self so select star from devices I'll execute this select star from devices all right and I'll just print out all the rules so once we create a device object so I'll just create a device object but uh, I'll just say fetch all run the program so this is going to give me all the devices right so this is how uh, this is how the things will work for us and uh, now you can uh, actively see how the things are going to work for us when it comes to the uh, Python part with the uh, database interactions guys so can I get one acknowledgement from all? Wonderful. So let me push this code to the GitHub and uh, now you can uh, work on this part. And so guys for our uh, next interactions, okay so this uh, let me just delete this file so this was uh, one more program so i'll just refactor this file name so i'll just write it like lalit underscore query dot py okay so let me now push the code to the github so this is our session number 10 Python DB interactions. Okay, so anyone with any queries now? 